Timothy, uh, let me introduce you to our listeners. Timothy is an original thinker, a very thoughtful person who has given some reflection and thought to traditional Christian views, which you find inconsistent with principles of law. Is that right, Timothy? That's correct. Uh, uh, I want to say thanks for uh, letting me be here. You have an alternative to offer to the church and Christian people. Anybody else who might want to be here about some alternatives and some valuable ideas? So before we give in, why don't you give me a little background about yourself, Timothy? Well, uh, I'm out here in Flo- I flyover country, and uh, 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 I'm, I'm in flyover country here, and uh, I come from a you know a non-educational background. Um, right. Um, I mean, let me say, you know, it's funny you should say that. I'll say something. I know that some people are going to disagree with me, but... Many of the ideological left say of the president that he's uneducated and the people who voted for him were lacking education. My response, Timothy, maybe it's valid, maybe it isn't. Well, Jesus was a carpenter and his disciples were fishermen. So, uh, but that would be my position <laughs> on that issue, <laughs> personally. But, you know, uh, I don't think less educated people are, are lacking in intelligence or, or thoughtfulness or intellect. I don't think it's true. Well, I, I guess you don't have to even know Stradivarius existed to be good on the fiddle. Right. So. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Uh, talk a little about yourself. Um, as a as I was growing up, I was going you know to community church, and um, it um, really didn't do a thing for me. It seemed like uh, there was you know you get your Zondervan manual, and you just kind of go through the motions, and it um, it just seemed to be. Uh, it, it, it really didn't, uh, you know, just going to your local community church and hearing the thoughts of the day uh, th- doesn't really give you a lot of answers to a lot of things. And uh, so um, I ascribed to a um, an exegetical church, uh-huh. and uh, it was a good distance away up in Pittsburgh. And, um, I, you know, I thought, well, that's it. You know, this is the place to be. And uh, and at one time I was I, I decided that I was going to perhaps write a courtroom dialogue of uh, uh, what might be being said in court there between God and Satan concerning human history and uh, different periods of history and, uh, you know, like the arguments like environment and heredity and uh, uh, and things like that. And um, I started running into, uh, you know, looking at things through a legal mindset, and I just started noticing all kinds of problems uh, with just basic fundamental uh, principles of law being violated, and uh, uh-huh. and and so it kind of snowballed. And what I did was, is I just put, took all the categories of doctrine, and pretty much emptied them of their content, except for the goals and purposes. You know, you have God, man, Satan, salvation, sin, right. uh-huh. and I, I reconstructed doctrines based uh, based on legal principles. Oh, that's great! I think that sounds like you're really giving some thought and reflection, as I said. And um, are you? What is your present occupation, or what do you? Whatever you might be doing with your life, uh, that I might peers might want to know about it, your present activities. If you want to talk about that, oh, I'm just a working man. Uh, I'm a. I do, you know, a maintenance technician. Uh, you know, organizing things, doing all kind of stuff. Uh, I do a lot of writing, and uh, I don't know. I, I spend a lot of time. Uh, Debating people. I've, I've debated thousands of people over the years. I don't know why. Uh, just, uh, well, uh, I'll tell you, Timothy, uh, I'm a working man. If you're going to define someone as a working man or someone who works, uh, that's what I do. Uh, so there is, I find no, um, some, no negative interpretation of being a working man, which, uh, you know, the, uh, the left ideology, uh, I'm sure you're aware of this, have uh, said that working men uneducated working men uh, are not too smart. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, I don't think it's true, uh, but they do say that, and they said that in the last election. Uh, Well, you know, I think the uh, standards and ideas or the stereotype of genius uh, was actually made up by someone who was not a genius. I mean, you know how, like, somebody can be... uh, on the forefront in one particular area, because that's where they put all their energies. 
right. and all of their study. And um, uh, the idea that you have to be, I don't know what, went on Jeopardy and, uh, you know, know right. all these various irrelevant facts, uh, it's it's sort of uh, misleading as to what, what they... But uh, the thing is, the proof's in the pudding, you know, uh, you know, like the Wright brothers, either it flies or it don't, right? right. That's yeah. true. Anyhow, um, uh, now why don't you tell me a little about your present, let me use the term, philosophical perspective on things, as much as you can tell <coughs> people listening about it, so we can understand it and grasp where you're coming from. Well, I, I like uh, to establish a legal basis. Uh, 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 and then uh, work from there. Uh, that's the, you know I, I like to do that. Um, you know I like to um, you know I could start anywhere with anything. It's like uh, it's like this. Here's uh, here's what should this should be considered an axiom all across Christendom. It's impossible to portray God as more just than He actually is. Right. And you can replace just with righteous or moral or good. It's impossible to portray God as more righteous than he actually is. The truth portrays God as he is, righteous. Right. Right? So, all false reports, false doctrines concerning God must portray him as less than righteous. And you can also say less than lawful, you know, less than noble, good, honorable, less than uh -huh. loving. You uh -huh. see? And so one must agree to that. So all false doctrines portray God as unjust. They have to. Right. And so, um, uh, not using uh, uh, the principles of law and viewing things is, is, is where people tend to go astray, and they tend to wonder how things actually are. Like, you know, like the rebellion between uh, God and Satan. Right. Uh, here's another irrefutable. It's, it's, um, God has declared all truth. Okay, now, if uh, if a man says, this is the truth, and it is not, you see the ramifications are. He's, it's, it's like placing lies is coming out of the mouth of God. Right. And uh, so, to put it legally like this, if, if two parties disagree, and neither suffers from ignorance as to what the truth of the matter actually is, Right. Each party is calling the other a liar. Right. There's no alternative. That's the way it is. Well, here you have Satan and God, Satan rebelling. Mm -hmm. God says, this is the way things are, this is the way things No, I disagree. He's accusing mm -hmm. God of lying. Right. And I would say that Satan was the first liberal. He accused God of what Satan himself was guilty of. You see? And right. so when, when Satan says, no, it is this way, Right. What Satan did was he accused God of lying, and one who lies is not lawful, is not honorable, good, noble. He right. misleads others. Right. And so what Satan actually did was Satan made the claim that he was the first lawful being in the universe. Right. Because if you believe a liar, you see, regardless of how well you think, you know, if you believe a lie, you're not in a lawful state. Right. And so this is what Satan used as his justification uh, by claiming to be the only lawful being. And here's the idea of the satanic ascension, which is he claimed to ascend into a higher state, a lawful estate, uh, by gaining knowledge that God was a liar. Right. And so then, therefore, God loses his authority to judge and all those sorts of things. And in false doctrines, all Christian false doctrines, they do that very thing. They uh -huh. portray God as unjust, though they'll call him just. Right. They portray God as unlawful and violating the fundamentals of law. And they also do the same thing. They claim they have attained the higher estate by knowledge of those doctrines, which, right. for the most part, uh -huh. they are unaware uh -huh. that it portrays God as a liar or unjust. Right. right. Yes. And so that's that's what's uh, been going on in, uh, in, in in Christian theology for centuries. Well, I I'm very glad to be informed by you about these views, but I'd like to ask you a question. You mentioned Satan. 
Satan is portrayed as leading a rebellion against God. And to me, his, his mistake was his excessive pride. He said, I'm not, going to be, I'm not going to be put in the position of being under anybody. I'll start my own country. No? Well, yes, but uh, he would never admit to that, of course. But Just like liberals don't like to, they don't like to admit people, to their leaders. And we do it too, as people. Yeah. We share that uh, pride of Satan, don't we? When one thinks higher of oneself than one ought, it, it, pride is claiming a higher estate than uh, you actually right. abide in. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, John, you seem to be in on this in the story in Genesis about the fall. Uh, the issue was the appeal of the serpent, who was Satan, he said to be Satan, was you can be a god. So he was appealing to Eve's uh, pride, no? Or sense of importance. Well, it, it is interesting. Uh, I will say that I, I disagree with uh, pretty much the idea of classifying it as the fall. Uh-huh. Um, in this way, um Adam, Adam and his wife Isha, they they, they uh, did not have knowledge of good or evil. No. And uh, so they were not in what you would call a righteous state, a higher state, in order to fall from. Oh, I see. Now here's my argument or my theories: is this: you have Satan calling God a liar. Right. The standard of proof is evidence. Uh, it's it's not faith. Any court that requires faith in its verdict is brute force. Right. And so Satan, who rejects faith in God, why would God demand that very faith as part of the verdict when he's, they, you know, you see what I mean? Right. So um, what it was is this venue here, this was a proving ground. That's what this was designed for. And the idea was Satan raised the question... You see, God did no overt acts, no outward evil acts, nothing that could be classified as evil. Right. However, when you talk about motive, the inner motive, you see, that's what colors the act. Right. And so if God says, praise me, praise me, Satan says it's because of pride. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, I have, I, you know, I'm swimming in a myriad of doctrines, uh, that I have come up with. Uh, you know, it's um, like this. God owns the copyright of all that is good. He right. is the original of all that is good. Man has not invented any good. You see what I mean? That You see? So, just like with copyright law, you have the, um, uh-huh. the, right, the, the right of attribution. Uh-huh. And so, you must give attribution to God because it's technically his machine you're operating. See what I mean? Right. And so, because of the copyright thing, you must attribute all good things to God. And your spiritual life that you are living, you uh-huh. didn't invent it. Right. You see, you're riding somebody else's horse. Right. And so, Satan holds the copyright on evil. He does. All evil. And so, there is no evil that man has invented that is new or goes beyond the evil of Satan. Satan is in the most evil state possible. He is, resp- he is res- responsible for the creation or the, the idea. It, it's interesting. I, I call it um, the idea of, um, of re-origination. It's, mm-hmm. it's interesting. You, let's say you have two guys on two isolated islands, no contact with anybody ever. You see, one guy invents a wheel. Okay, and then later the other guy on the other island, he don't know the other guy, he invents the wheel. It is no less genius than the first man in human history who invented the wheel, right? Right. And so God, who all, always knew all things, knows about all evil and all that kind of stuff, he never communicated that evil or, or suggested that evil, right? Uh-huh. And Satan, through reorigination, in terms of he... Mm-hmm. In, invented the evil wheel all by himself, even though God always knew about the wheel before, right? But right. he put it into operation. And so here you have, um, he gets the dubious cre- credit of uh, reorigination of evil in terms of he come up with it. And uh, uh, he put it into operation. So he has an operational copyright of all evil. And so this is where all men, 
when they do evil, it's Satan's ways. Right. See? Because uh, of copyright law. And you see, this is all having to do with law. Right. I see where you're coming from. I and, you know, look at Job. Witness. Right. The accusation uh, is that God is a liar. Right. Right there in Job. Whether the idea, whether one wants to the argument that God was bribing Job, or that God knew that Job was motivated by getting things, and God didn't bribe him, but Job had that on his mind, right? Right. Like a pair, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, symb- symbiotic relationship, right? Right. And so, whether the accusation is, you know, that God bribed Job, or the thing is, that Job having that motivation and God calling him righteous. You see, if, if, if Job had that motivation, he wouldn't have been righteous. God had been a liar. And then the idea of skin for skin, you know, witness intimidation. If, you see, not that God necessarily, he's suggesting that God threatened him. The idea that he was feeling threatened and the idea that Job was accused of having a conflict of interest because that's what that is. Whether it's, uh, you know, bribery or, you know, uh, if you have to pay somebody to do something, they're gonna, to say something, they're going to say something they normally wouldn't say, right? Right. And so, even though in the case of Job, uh-huh. Job was vindicated. He was without conflict of interest. And you see, if you're going to lose your life, you're going to lose everything. And so, there's nothing to bribe you with, right? And so, when it was proven that Job no longer valued his own life, his testimony to God did not change. So, that vindicated Job. And it proved that God was true speaking about Job, saying that he was righteous. Right. However, that didn't answer the question as to whether God was truthful or not. Uh-huh. And Jesus Christ came to testify that God is true, truthful. They need to turn that into an adjective. I come to testify that God is true. It's truthful. Uh-huh. And so the idea is, when well, you got Satan accusing God of lying, God accusing Satan of lying, uh-huh. evidence, evidence decides the case. Where you have the acts that occurred in the garden... Well, that proved that Satan was up to no good, but it didn't answer the question whether God was telling the truth or not, Uh right? And so, if God is as evil as Satan, there's nobody with any authority to send anybody anywhere, right? Timothy, I really, we are sort of running out of time. It's been a very delight, and it's been extremely enlightening hearing what you have to say. I wish I had more time to do it. Uh, I think you should um, write a book on this. I did. I sent it to you. Oh, you sent it to me. Oh, great. A couple of books. I didn't get it yet. Yeah, Principles well, of Legal Standard for the First Genuine Doctrinal Reformation of the Church. Okay, when I get it, I'm going to read it very carefully. I'm going to go through every word because I think you're a very thoughtful gentleman, an intelligent person, despite being a working man, which is really uh, sort of a uh, it's a way of categorizing somebody as, as lacking intellectual ability. I don't believe it's a, it's a truthful perspective, but... That's what some people say. Uh, well, I, would, I will say this. The last thing that I would need to say is, in order to argue against my doctrines, you're going to have to argue against law, principles of law. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not prepared to argue until I read the book. I've heard what Correct. you Correct. No, no, I meant you, you know, not the, not the you, you. <laughs> people what? in general. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. I'll be very happy to read the book when I get it immediately. And um, I was very happy to hear what you had to say today. And great, the, great. I, I appreciate sort of, uh, being here. I don't have much time, but um, I, when I read the book, I may have you on again, okay? And sure so thing. So you can talk more about the book, okay? Assuming great. It's, it's a semi-exhaustive, uh, you know, sort of argumentation against a lot of the classic arguments and things. I guess it's, it's over 700 pages. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's quite good. I mean, and uh, w- w- do, you, how, do you belong to a specific church that uh, you're comfortable in, or...? Uh, no, because um, when I go there, with, uh, you know, with this, no more than a pastor. What am I going to Right. I'm going to stand there for the, you listen to the thoughts for the day, and then, you know, and, uh, uh-huh. you, know, you know, church reminds me of sort of like getting all dressed up for the prom and then not gone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I mean, uh, I'm willing to hear you out, Timothy. I was glad to hear you out. And I'm going to look at your book and get back to you, certainly by an email, okay? About Great. Uh, th- thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's okay, Timothy. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Bye.